Shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the God of Israel, our Father, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. Double honor to the other apostles of Great Millstone. And shalom to my fellow laborers out there preaching the gospel. It's your brother Pariah coming back at you with another lesson. Glory will it be edifying. Right? And it's um, the title of the lesson is basically, I'm going to copy and paste this uh the title of this article and put it on a YouTube channel. All right. And it's uh, from End Time Headline. This is entitled Horrifying Drought Causing Widespread Crop Failures Throughout the United States and Europe. All right. And I want to uh, jump straight into it. I'm going to read it all the way through. And afterwards, we'll get some scriptures. All right. So this says, uh, We are really. It says we really are reaching a major crisis point thanks to soaring uh, fertilizer prices, insane weather patterns, and the war in Ukraine. Global food supplies have been getting tighter and tighter. So we really need a banner year for agricultural production in both the United States and Europe in 2022. And it's not going to happen. In fact, unprecedented drought is absolutely devastating crops all over the Northern Hemisphere. A lot of people are complaining about how high food prices are right now, but just wait. If some sort of a miracle doesn't happen, agricultural production is going to be way below expectations in both the United States and Europe, and that is going to have very serious implications for 2023. Let me start by talking about the nightmare that is starting to unfold in Europe. According to CNN, it is now being projected that farmers in Italy have lost up to 80% of their crops or 80% uh, of their harvest because the drought has become so severe. In Italy, farmers in some parts of the country have lost up to 80% of their harvest this year due to severe weather anomalies, the Codretti Farming Association said Thursday. How are those farmers going to survive? Many farmers in France are facing similar losses because they have only been receiving a fraction of the rainfall that they normally get. In France, where an intense drought has hammered farmers and promoted widespread limits on fresh water use, there were just 9.7 millimeters, this is 30, uh, 0 0.38 inches of rain uh, last month. Um, it says that was 84% down on the average level seen for July between 1991 and 2022, making it the driest month since March 1961. The agency added, it says crop failures in France could be a really, really big deal because France is normally the fourth, uh, the fourth largest exporter of wheat in the entire world. France is the fourth largest exporter of wheat and among the top five exporters of maize globally. Poor harvest due to drought may heap further pressure on grain supplies after Russia's invasion of Ukraine caused global shockwaves. The situation in Germany also is extremely dire. It's being reported that things are already so bad that some sections of the, uh, the Rhine River have dropped to dangerously low levels. German, Germany's uh, most important river is running dry as Europe suffers through a drought that is on course to become its worst in 500, 500 years with terrifying wildfires uh, burning once again in France. Water levels in the Rhine, which carries 80% of all goods transported by water in Germany from its industrial heartlands to Dutch ports, are now so low that it could become impassable to barges later this week, threatening vital supplies of oil and coal, and the country is relying upon, or that the country is relying upon, relying upon as uh, Russia turns off the gas tap. Of course, in the U.S., it's dealing with severe drought too. According to the U.S. drought monitor, above half of the nation is experiencing some level of drought at this moment. And we are being told that the ongoing mega drought in the Southwest is the worst in 1,200 years or 1,200 years. Things are particularly bad in Texas, if you can believe it. 
Dallas just had a stretch in what they had no measurable rain at all for two straight months. The daily highs in Dallas have been 95 degrees or higher for three straight weeks, much hotter than normal for this time of year. The Dallas-Fort Worth area has been more or has even more problems amid an extreme drought going as far back as May 17th. 100% of Dallas County is in an extreme drought, while 21% of the whole state is experiencing exceptional drought, the most intense category of drought according to the U.S. Drought Monitor. It says a 67-day a, a stretch with no measurable rain came to an end in Dallas on Wednesday with 0.41 of an inch of rain fell. That was the second longest dry streak at Dallas-Fort Worth Airport. The standing record was 85 consecutive days that spanned much of the summer of uh, 2000. It says the lack of moisture has been crippling for the state's absolutely massive agricultural, uh, agriculture industry. There are 247,000 farms and ranches in Texas, and nearly all of them are deeply suffering right now. Drought, the drought pressing Texas agriculture industry, which is responsible for 10% of the state's gross domestic product, is pushing farmers and ranchers to the brink. The state's 247,000 farms and, and ranches covering 127 million acres haven't had a whole year of rain since 2017. Almost 24 million of Texas population lives in drought facing areas as of the 1st of August less than 1% of the state was not facing some level of drought or abnormal dryness. At this point conditions are so dry in Texas that many ranchers have been forced to panic sell their herds. For much more on this please see blah 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 and it says uh, ranchers are selling off their cattle in unprecedented numbers due to the drought and has been enormous and it says and that has enormous implications for twenty twenty three. You know, like the um what I've been, you know, hearing lately and stuff and a lot of brothers probably heard this before. You know, twenty twenty three is gonna be the year from hell. <laughs> you know? Cause man, this shit about to get bad, man. You know, going to the end of twenty twenty two. You know, you know, Hope that the year twenty twenty three man going it's gonna be real trying. This shit about to get bad, man. It's gonna get way worse. The Lord said, Greater evils than those who thou hast seen shall be done hereafter. Right? So yeah, uh, let's continue. It says it says other states in the southwest are also being hit extremely hard by this drought. Over in Utah, the size of the Great Salt Lake just continues to get smaller and smaller due to the relentless dry conditions. The warm, arid desert in the west certainly had its fair share of the summer heat. Salt Lake City International Airport recorded a high of 100 degrees on July 28th, making the 16th day uh, that month a triple digit uh, temperatures and breaking the previous record of July 15th in 1960. Last month, the city tied its record for the hottest recorded temperature of 107 degrees for the fourth time, according to blah 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 blah. So, yeah, man. Um, as the title says again, horrifying drought causes widespread crop failures throughout the United States and Europe. So, your question should be, what is causing this drought, or better yet, who is causing this drought, right? And what we found out is is actually the heavenly father all right who they call the god of the bible or just god all right uh the god of israel right the god of uh, our fathers abraham isaac and jacob the god of the israelites okay the same god that flooded the earth all right destroyed sodom and gomorrah and the neighboring cities same god that plagued egypt right the great and terrible the mighty Yahweh. okay <laughs> the Lord is known by the judgment which he executes, and this is judgment from the Heavenly Father. And uh, as you see, the first word here is horrifying, all right? It's a horrifying drought. And horrifying is just a synonym for terrible. And if 
you go to Psalm 66 and 5, it says, Come and see the works of the Most High. He is terrible in his doing toward the children of men. Okay, because he's uh, sent a spirit of famine, okay, on the, on the world, and mainly here in America. Okay, and um, that drought is, is uh, the spirit of famine is causing the drought. Okay, so I send them for that word terrible. It says the Lord is terrible, the Heavenly Father is terrible. And he's doing toward the children of men. See what you got here? It says, uh, extremely or distressingly bad or serious. The Lord ain't nothing to be played with. See? It says, causing horror, extremely shocking. So, a synonym, some similar words for that word terrible. It's horrifying. It said, the drought is horrifying. So, this is a work of the Lord, okay? This Nahum 1 and 4, he, meaning Yahweh, through his son, Yahweh Shai, we know, you know, we can't leave the Messiah out. Yahweh shot his son because according to St. John 5 and 22, he have committed all judgment unto his son. Okay. So if that's, that's part of the order. All right. The heavenly father's behind it, but it's his son, the one that's giving orders to these different angels to come down to the earth and execute the, uh, his plans. All right. And his judgments. So, uh, yeah, this uh, Nahum 1 and 4, my bad. It says, he rebuked the sea and make it dry. He drieth up all the rivers. See? <laughs> Let me read it again. He rebuked the sea and make it dry. And dry up all the rivers. Okay, so the Lord is the one that's drying up the waters. All right? Upon the world. It says, Bashan language, languisheth and karma and the flower of Lebanon languisheth. I got 111. I had brought this precept out um, with the previous lesson I had did a couple of days ago about the drought. So this is basically just a part two to this lesson because I just seen another um, thing, you know, another article recently just came out, you know, that we just read. You know, it's kind of like a, a little update. So yeah, this had got 111, and I call for a drought upon the land. And upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon that which the ground bringeth forth, which is crops or harvest. It, it says, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of the hands. Okay. So the Lord called for this drought upon, uh, upon the world. All right. And mainly here in America, a.k.a. Babylon and the Great. Jeremiah 15, 38. A drought is upon her waters. And they shall be dried up, for it is the land of graven images. That her, which referred to as a land, all right, is the land of America, okay? All right, the mother of harlots, the great whore, all right? It says, uh, for it is the land of graven images, and the, and they are mad upon their idols. Because, you, know, uh, you know, how do we know this America, you know? America, is, is, uh, this land is full of graven images and idols. Because, you know, according to the uh, First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, uh, you have a freedom of religion. You can worship any God that you want. You can worship yourself. You can worship a fucking brick. You can worship anything, man. You know, it's multiple gods that these people worship, man, here in this land. And it's idolatry because the Lord, he is the true and living power. And everybody hates him and they hates 